Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator, and in this video, we're going to talk about something that uh, was making headlines recently, and that is uh, a consulting firm makes $140 million from extra booking fees, and the U.S. government happily pays the bill. Well, it's the citizens that, that pay the bill. This country, this um, company charges the fees and then they hand the money to the government and then they bill the government for their portion of this. Uh, this is Booz Allen Hamilton, a management consulting company that runs the recreational website that people use to book campsites and permits to explore public lands in the U.S. And yeah, they are making a lot of money here. A LinkedIn page by uh, Kate Chapman, editor of LinkedIn News, uh, says that they billed the government, invoiced the government for more than $140 million from 2018 to 2022. And they say that um, that is far above the $87 million they estimated they would earn in the first five years of the contract. So it's almost about double. So um, right now, there's some people that have put this into a lawsuit. And um, RV Travel says that this could open the operations at recreation.gov. And Outdoor Project says no, recreation.gov doesn't fund public lands. So the money they're collecting doesn't go to help maintain the lands, it goes to the company, and then the company, of course, they're looking to get the lawsuit dismissed, and they're like, no, no, those fees aren't just for us, but they do make a very hefty amount of fees that the lawsuit um, says a, a lot of them are junk fees. So there, there's a lot of fees on recreation.gov. Um, including a $15 non-refundable application fee to float the Yampa in Green Rivers and Dinosaur National Monument. So, yeah, you know, $10 cancellation fee for um, canceling a campsite reservation, $10 change fee to add or move a night's campsite or to move to a different site, $10 reservation fee to secure a backcountry permit, $6 non-refundable reservation fee to obtain a climbing permit at Acadia National Park's Otter Cliffs, $2 non-refundable administration fee for vehicle trips to Cadillac Summit at Acadia National Park, um, a dollar application fee for lottery applicants to view fireflies at Great Smoky Mountain National Park, and, you know, that's just some of the fees that this company charges. So this RV Travel article says that the company created a fee structure for its services that included an array of fees for making campground reservations, acquiring hiking and river rafting permits, drive-through vehicle permits for national parks and monuments, and other recreational activities. Recreation.gov reveals no disclosure that the site is operated by an entity other than a fe the federal land agencies. The use of the top-level domain, attribute.gov, adds to the opaque nature of this site. So there was a lawsuit filed for refund of junk fees. So on uh, February 11th, 2023, um, there was seven plaintiffs requesting certification as class, as class action. The plaintiffs are seeking more than $5 million in refunds of fees. The law firm calls junk fees and compensatory and punitive damages. And they, um, in their complaint, the plaintiffs over that their case is about holding Booz Allen, a multi-billion dollar for-profit federal contractor responsible for forcing American consumers to pay Ticketmaster-style junk fees to access national parks and other 
federal recreation lands in violation of the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act. Uh, the complaint cites so many junk fees, such as those that RecreationGov charges users through the website app. They include other things, but park access reservation fees, processing fees, um, reservation fees, permit fees, lottery fees, uh, yeah, and cancellation fees. You know, the first time I ran into this was um, I was I went up to Glacier and it was when the fires were there, like in about 2017. And I just had some time off. And I was thinking of going and people were like, you're going to go in the fires? I'm like, I guess it, it was pretty interesting to, you know, see uh, an active fire zone. But um, I went to, you know, go to a campsite one night in the park and there wasn't a lot of people there. It was, you know, at the end of the, getting to be the end of the summer and kids were back in school. And this was a, a campsite in the park. There, there's not a lot up in near Glacier, really. And so I, I just went into the front and, and the lady was like, okay, so the campsite fee. And then there's a, a $2 fee to reserve the campsite. And I was like, I'm not reserving the campsite. I'm just here. You know, I mean, for years, you just went and you put money in this envelope and then you put the envelope in the box and they came and they collected it. You know, I'm like, I'm not reserving this. She's like, well, we have to put you in the system. So even if you just walk up and, you know, get a site, you have to be put in the system so that somebody else doesn't take the site. <laughs> and I mean, you have to pay it because you just have to pay it. And so this is part of you know, what this lawsuit is about. And, and there's 13 federal agencies that use recreation.gov, uh, the Bureau of Land Management, Bureau of Le Reclamation, Bureau of Engraving and Printing, uh, Federal Highway Administration, uh, National Archives and Records Administration, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, National Park Service, Presido Trust, Smithsonian Institution, Tennessee Valley Authority, Fish and Wildlife Services, U.S. Cor Army Corps of Engineers, and U.S. Forest Service. And uh, Booz Allen processed more than 9 million transactions in 2021 20, uh, alone through recreation.gov. So it says this lawsuit has the potential to impact every person in the U.S. who has used recreation.gov to make a reservation for the reservation use of federal lands, for the recreational use of federal lands. All such persons are covered by inclusion in the national class of the action. If successful, plaintiffs will receive restitution of the fees not allowed by that FLREA and could score compensatory and punitive damage awards as well. The case also asks the court to enjoin the defendant from continuing to charge the disputed fees and force them to provide truthful, accurate, and prominently displayed disclosures to consumers to reflect that Booz Allen operates recreation.gov. And so uh, on February 27th, a senior associate in Booz Allen Media Relations and Corporate Affairs Office said uh, Booz Allen is aware of the complaint recently filed in Virginia federal court related to recreation.gov. Its allegations are grossly inaccurate and reflect a fundamental lack of understanding of Booz Allen's work supporting the government. We are proud of our work and the value that recreation.gov provides. We will vigorously defend against these meritless claims. So in this, uh, no, recreation.gov doesn't um, fund public lands. Th this person here, they must have climbed Mount Whitney, the highest part, in, the highest peak in the United States at 14,496 uh, feet. And uh, they paid $6, a reservation fee uh, for a hiking route. I it looks like all routes for one adult. <laughs> $6, almost like 40% of what it costs for the the permit is the fee. So that adds up by all the transactions they do. So right here, you know, they say $6 doesn't sound so bad, but let's take that detailed to uh, the Mount Whitney where people, over 16,000 people applied for permits to hike 
the the peak in this season alone. Each applicant paid um, rec.gov a six dollar application fee to be considered in the lottery. Uh, about 30% of the applicants win, and then they pay a $15 permit fee to be able to use the trails. So that's a lot of money. 16,000 applicants times $6 per applicant per application is $96,000. And then they say the winners, are, who are 30% of the applicants, so 16,000 times 0 0.3, that's 4,800 people get to buy that $15 permit. So that's another $72,000. So the people entering the lottery at $96,000 and the people then that pay for the permit at $72,000 comes up to $168,000 that Booz Allen is taking in for that one area alone, that Mount Whitney hiking pass. And there are a lot, a lot of areas that charge these fees and then more and more all the time because, you know, well, it's becoming too populated, so we have to limit access. So now we have to put people into a lottery and then you can see, you can, you know, join the lottery, buy a ticket, and then and then maybe you get to go on the trail, all at a cost. And Booz Allen's defense is, um, they say that the reality is that Booz Allen doesn't charge any fees to the users of Recreation.gov, including the plaintiffs in this case. Booz Allen operates Recreation.gov pursuant to the terms of the contract, um, the motion points out. The federal agencies that use recreation.gov to post available recreation opportunities for reservation decide whether and for how much to charge fees to the users who make those reservations. And then Ashley Howard, a spokesperson for Booz Allen, uh, told Traveler, this, this article here, that Booz Allen is paid by the government in accordance with the terms of the contract without divulging the financial terms of the contract. So maybe this lawsuit will get us to having the financial terms of the contract be divulged because, you know, there uh, other other places say that, well, no, Booz Allen charges the fees and they collect the fees and then they give it to the park service and then they build the park service. So it, it's all seems to be in gray area, maybe, as you know, as to who really determines the fees. Why does it get passed over and, and then build and and who what exactly is? the terms of the contract that Booz Allen is paid by the government in accordance with, that, that hopefully this lawsuit will get to that, and it, it will make it so that there isn't a bunch of Ticketmaster fees out there, because, you know, pretty soon, like everything else, just the public lands will be, be for the rich, <laughs> you know, you, you won't even be able to afford to enter the lottery, it's um, it, this could get out of hand very fast. And right now, there's a group of people that are looking to get it under control. So we'll we'll see what happens with this. But I'm definitely for it. I mean, I I like it better the old way. <laughs> you went up, you got your campsite, you put your money in an envelope, and and it's a done deal, and we didn't have a reservation system. There's, there's ways around being able to go to your national parks and national recreation areas without getting a third-party, for-profit, multi-billion-dollar company involved. So stay tuned, people.